Nice to meet you. I'm Victor. I'm currently a full-time software engineer. And today I'm going to go over how I acquired the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Certification within one month. And I ended up scoring 897 points out of 1,000. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's start off with some quick fire logistics. The exam itself costs 150 US dollars to take. In addition to that, I spent money on some preparation materials. In particular, one month of a Cloud Guru personal basic subscription plan. And that ended up costing me $49 per one month. I did take advantage of the one week free trial. Aside from that, um, I also paid for two sets of practice exams, one from Udemy and one from WizLabs. I'll be linking all these resources in the description below. The reason why I paid for an a Cloud Guru subscription instead of just paying for the course, the standalone course on Udemy was because I wanted to access the hands-on labs and also the practice exam at the end of the course. Aside from that, there was also another course on a Cloud Guru that I took, which is the Cloud Practitioner course for coverage. I didn't complete any of the quizzes, but I took it for coverage. So that's why I ended up paying for the subscription. And in fact, the pricing per month for the personal basic plan got reduced from $49 to $39 in the time of my recording. In addition to the resources I just mentioned, I also followed along with the instructor when he was covering a certain service or topic in AWS. And as a result, I racked up an AWS bill of $17.16. I did go above the AWS free tier. And I did this because I wanted the full experience. I wanted more hands-on practice because I actually do plan on using AWS in my personal projects and at work. Moving on to the next topic, we have time. How much time did I spend preparing for this examination? I officially started studying for this on December 18th of 2020. And I took my exam on January 20th of 2021. I took some days off during this time period and I certain, and I had some days off also that I decided to spend extra time studying for. So on average, I would say I spent five hours studying for a total of 135 hours. Keep in mind, I did overstudy for this exam given that I scored way above 720. So I didn't really need to score that high. But yeah, um, that's how much time I spent preparing for this exam. I would say if you want to spread it out a little bit, that's probably a good idea. I just wanted to get through this as soon as possible because at this current point in my life, I'm more trying to work on one thing at a time. Next up, we have exam scheduling. Chances are, if you're like me, you're gonna be scheduling a remote proctored exam. If you're doing so, schedule it with Pearson View. This is gonna save you a lot of headache. It turns out that PSI has a lot of negative reviews. So do that. And if you're going for a popular time slot, like a weekend in the morning, I would suggest you schedule this exam out weeks in advance because those time slots run off often. You might be lucky and you'll be able to catch someone's canceled exam, but don't count on that. What I ended up doing was scheduling for a Wednesday morning. And generally the weekdays are pretty free in terms of like time slots. A lot of time slots are available. On the day of your exam, make sure to run your system check before you check in. You're generally allowed to check in 30 minutes before the actual exam. And the reason you want to do this is to make sure that the exam software runs fine before you start your check-in process. For me, I ended up having to restart my computer during the check-in process because I did not disable screen time for my Mac. So you want to avoid that hassle. When you're taking your exam, make sure you find an environment that's quiet. The reason you want to do this is because uh, you might get disqualified if they hear any noise or another person in the room. So keep that in mind. All right, so now let's jump into the meat of how I actually studied for this exam. I started off with the A-Cloud Guru course for the certification, and that course was 36 hours long. I ended up spending a little bit over 50 hours to complete it. And the reason for that was I follow along with my own AWS account, and also I took a bunch of notes in the form of copying lecture slides until they stuck into my head. That's just how I study. Now commenting on different aspects of the A-Cloud Guru subscription, First off, the quizzes were great. The video was great. The practice exam was splendid. Um, the UI was actually a lot better than the actual exam. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The explanation for everything was awesome. Good for studying material. One thing I didn't like about the ACOG Guru subscription were the hands-on labs. Essentially, I felt like they were delivered in a poor fashion. First off, the instructions were in video format. So you had to go back and forth on the video to reread some instructions. Secondly, when you launch your lab environment, you have to open a new tab, copy and paste credentials over, and that could have been implemented with one click. And that's actually how WizLab does it. Thirdly, there wasn't any validation for your labs. So essentially you just tick which items that you completed at the bottom. And yeah, that's it. There's not really any validation on whether or not you actually completed the task in the lab. So I didn't really like that too much. 
So yeah, in addition to the in addition to the Certified Solutions Architect course, I also took the Cloud Practitioner course on a Cloud Guru for more coverage. I just watched the video at 2x speed. All right, so let's talk about Wiz Labs. For the package that I purchased, it came with eight full-length practice exams, 14 section quizzes for specific services, and 50 labs. I don't know if the labs are gonna be offered when you do your purchase, but they were really helpful for me. First of all, I only completed four of the full-length practice exams, and I scored 81, 83, 86, and 90% respectively. Every time I took an exam, I went through the solutions in a very detailed manner. I covered everything. And I thought this, this tactic was superior in terms of just blindly studying for everything. It helped me identify areas that I was weak in. And also like the exam solutions were sufficient enough for me to review these topics for the most part. When it came to the section quizzes, I didn't touch any one of them, but you could probably do that if you feel weak in a certain service or area, if you want to improve your understanding of that service. Now for the labs, um, like I mentioned earlier, I do prefer these labs a lot better than the Cloud Guru hands-on labs. And the reason because, first of all, the instructions were in text format. The system, the labs were overall more turnkey, so they were a lot more convenient and intuitive. And also they had a validation system built in. So you were actually doing the lab and you're actually being tested on whether or not you completed the lab. One thing I would say about the labs, one drawback is you are actually limited to how many times you could take these labs because you are on a credit system. But overall, I still think it's worth it and I can't recommend Wiz Labs enough. In addition to the aforementioned paid resources, I also used the following free resources. I went to the certification page and I went through some practice questions, the exam rubric and the exam guide. I went to AWS training for the AWS Well Architectured training course. I don't know how helpful that was, but I completed it for the sake of it. Now time for some external resources. I first use J. Cole Morrison's article on VPC. He basically creates an analogy for VPC in terms of a city, and this helps you understand this concept a lot. This is one of the more difficult concepts to wrap around your, to wrap your head around. So I definitely recommend this article. And the final resource I'm going to mention today is Jayendra's blog. And this is basically like a giant list of cheat sheets for AWS exams. And I basically went here whenever I needed to dive deep into a topic. And yeah, that's basically all the resources that I used. So that basically sums up how I prepared for this exam. And I'm going to end this video with a bonus tip. Chances are, if you're watching this, you're interested in getting this certification. Maybe you've been thinking about this for several months, up to a year. And maybe you even have some resources on hand that you haven't really gone through yet. Well, the number one reason why I was able to get the certification within one month was because I had consequences and deadlines in place to ensure that I made progress. And the concept that I really want to drill into your head is the deadline is the ultimate inspiration and a deadline without a consequence is meaningless. So here's how I incorporated deadlines and consequences into my studying. Basically, I have an accountability partner and I told him that I wanted to complete the A Cloud Guru course in 10 days. And like I mentioned earlier, that actually was 50 hours worth of work. And I wouldn't have been able to complete it in 10 days if I didn't have a deadline and consequence in place. My consequence was 200 US dollars. And boy, I'm going to tell you, 200 US dollars is a whole lot of motivation. And that got me through that. This was pretty hard. This was extremely rough for me too, because I was holding a full-time job and also it was during holidays. Another example of how you can incorporate a deadline and a consequence is scheduling your exam before you're even ready. And that forces you to study really hard for that to get ready. I did this two days before I took the exam on Martin Luther King Day. I had that day off. And personally, I've already been going into a slump of like not really taking studying too hard and just really lagging out. So basically that morning, the morning of, I scheduled my exam for two days from then. And that basically forced me to study optimally for the next two days to finish strong. Because if I didn't, I'd have to take this exam again. And the worst part is I would have to pay another 150 US dollars to schedule that exam. So that was enough motivation for me to finish strong and I did. But yeah, those are two examples on how you can incorporate consequence deadlines to ensure that you've acquired this exam in a timely fashion. Don't drag it out. You don't want to do that. You could do this in a short time. Do one thing at a time. Yeah. 
Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content and you found that it was valuable, please like, subscribe, and comment down below any of your thoughts and opinions. And if you're interested in an opportunity of working with me personally, please join the mailing list down below and I will notify you as soon as I have that ready towards the end of this year. But yeah, until next time.